Hey guys, today we're gonna get right into the good stuff and hopefully we can teach you a thing or two. But I thought today, since we're not doing any fishing and I had a ton of homework to do, that it was a good idea to go ahead and show you what's inside of my tackle box for inshore saltwater fishing. So this is not bass fishing, this is inshore saltwater. So let's get to my tackle box. It's very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add that today we're also using some fancy video equipment. We're using the glide cam. I have this on my new slider. Yeah. See how fancy? Whoop. And Darcy's tackle box is a bucket. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to mention real quick, I've been using a bucket forever now. I don't know, the bucket just seems to work for me. <laughs> it works for everybody. In the it's bucket. very redneckish, I guess you could say. It's very redneckish. She is a redneck if you watched the video but yesterday. If you do have a suggestion, like for a good tackle box, I actually would like an actual real tackle box bag. So if you have a good suggestion for one that's affordable, um, let me know in the comments below. We do have a big pen one for offshore, and but that's another video. Yes. All right. So she has a series of these Plano boxes in there. Um, I'm going to hold it up for you, and then Dar Sizzle is going to talk about her very favorite lures that are in here. Let me show it to you. Look at this. Oh, quad cam. Nice. So I was gonna kind of go through like each each section and pull out each lure that I have in here. So I just I'm just gonna start somewhere here. Let's well, you're see. only doing your favorites, right? You're not doing every lure in here. Well, I'm gonna give them like I'm gonna tell them what's inside my tackle box. So I'm gonna be showing you basically everything I have and the ones that work I'm gonna tell you and the ones that don't work don't use them um, so I've got right here a whole bunch of DOA terrorize you see they're all different colors I actually want to give a shout out to Captain Patrick Smith of Swamp to Sea Guide Services he actually got me hooked on these things went fishing with him a couple times and the DOA terrorize he's caught tarpon big snook on them Jack Cravals. I have yet to catch a tarpon on this lure, but I also don't fish it enough. But um, it, we have the darker colored ones, we have the lighter colored ones, I have the ones with a little red on the um, on the bottom of the nose here. This is a dark colored one. And kind of just when, I, when I'm in shore saltwater fishing and I'm um, throwing lures and I actually see baits that are small around, that's when I stick to smaller baits like this. You gotta match the hatch. Yeah, and then I just let it sink to the bottom, jerk it a couple times, let it sink to the bottom and do it again and you usually get the bite on the fall. Um, so those are the DOA Terror Eyes. I've also got some blue ones too here, some extras. Um, so that's that. And then... Let me do one next. Yeah, Brian can talk about it. I'm gonna do one next. All right, here's, here we got some jig heads. You can see that right there. White jig heads. My favorite color jig heads is, like I always say, <laughs> dark side. My three favorite colors are white, white, and white. So, you know, you can use a bucktail or a jig head for almost anything. And this is about a medium size. And actually, we use this on a sabiki uh, instead of a weight to catch runners and, and other bait fish. It's like just another hook on your sabiki. So, that's a decent idea we've learned. Uh, and yeah. you can. I'm doing the bucktails. <laughs> you can also use much smaller ones than this that we talked about in an inshore video uh, under dock lights. Go ahead, Sizzle. Yeah, well, you just have to show them we have all different sizes. Three-eighths, half-ounce, quarter, uh, quarter-ounce, eighth-ounce, you name it. We've got all different sizes in here, depending on the water conditions. If I wanted to get down faster, I use a heavier weight and whatnot. Um, and then also inside here, you can show them this. Show them what? You little shrimps? We have these, the, Darcy loves Yuzuri. So this is a Yuzuri shrimp. Let's see if I can get it focused in for you. Very nice. And she has these in all different sizes and you can troll these or throw these. And you catch a lot of fish with them. This is a smaller one. I had some bigger ones around before. Oh, they're in my, they're in my pocket. <laughs> also got a DOA crab right here. I don't use it enough. But it, can, it should catch fish. So I'll let you know when I do catch a fish on it. There you go. I was, I was looking for a, a, a pen the other day and I saw she had these lures hidden. So that's why they're in my pocket. So anyway, she has a ton of these Yuzuri shrimps. Yeah, and then you can talk about your other favorite baits there too. What's my other favorite bait? What favorite bait? What's your chatterbaits. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> I love these chatterbaits. I don't, I have, you don't use them actually, I just found them again. You know, sometimes you have a bait and then you totally forget you have it. <laughs> like a tool and then you'll see it for months and then you look at it and you're like, oh, my chatterbait. Anyways, this is the chatterbait and you just put a soft plastic on it. Uh, any old soft plastic will do. 
but uh, I used these a couple times. I got I got them in a Lucky Taco Box uh, box once, I guess, and just started using them. I caught a lot of fish on this thing, so we uh, I like to, I'm gonna I love to use these. I'm gonna put this on the outside of the plastic bucket, so I'd be sure to use it soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna go through the next section. We try to go a little along a little faster. I think this is gonna be a very long video. I've got a lot of lures. Let's speed it up. All right. So here we go. You've seen this in a lot of videos, I'm sure. This is my pink Izuri crystal minnow. Love it. Catches a ton of fish. I troll with it a lot. That's actually why I've got a leader attached to it. It that was um, pretty new, so I decided to keep it on there and just attach it to a pole real quick. So that's my Azuri Crystal Minnow. This is the larger size, the 130 millimeter. Um, I've also got Live Target. I've got a Live Target mullet popper here. She loves that thing, never catches any fish. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> it just looks so realistic. It looks exactly like a mullet. It has all the colors, the correct colors on it, and it pops right on the surface. So you can see how like realistic it looks. It just looks awesome. I wouldn't understand why a fish wouldn't hit it. But I also don't fish you it don't. enough. So um, until I catch a fish on this, I'll let you know as well. But I do love. You don't use thing. it a lot. I try to use it when I can. This is just another color, chrome color. Nice. Very pretty. And then let me do yeah, let me finish that whole section right here. And then I've also have this. We have trolled it offshore before a couple times. But we haven't been able to get it offshore lately, but this is a nice squid and it's got a big old lip right here and pulls through the water when we're regular trolling. So I actually bought this. Look at this. Glide cam, guys. Glide cam. Yeah. So it's a very nice, pretty lure and I'm um, going to keep it in my bag just in case. All right, Mount Brian's going to go. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm going to show you. I talked about this the other day, but this is a balloon Fisher King clip. Boop. There you go. And it basically, you clip a balloon, a balloon through here, and you clip this into your line. It's got like a clamp on it. You can, you can see that. All right. Anyway, we use this offshore for shark fishing and any sort of fishing that have a balloon. And we also use it inshore shark fishing. And so it's a very useful tool. And uh, we got a bunch of these from Balloon Fisher King. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, I don't know, just a good thing. It's in, it's in here. And I guess you're next. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so then uh, this is my next section in my box here. I have a couple things in here. All the hooks are attached, everything's a mess. Oh. All right. We got two more boxes, so Sorry. let's get moving. So this is a popper right here. This is a, just a regular old popper that yeah, you can throw on the beach. It's a good beach allure. This is also another top water that I like to throw. This is the canine walking dog lure. Sorry, these all these lures are attached. But this is a canine walking dog lure that I use for bass. This is the larger version. And then uh, this is also another lip diver. This is called the Strike Pro, and it has a big old jointed body and really moves through the water. I actually have a how-to video on this on my Lucky Tackle Box series, so you can check that out too. And then one more, another canine walking dog lure. You have a bunch of those. A bunch of different colors in those. Is this what your Tackle Box looks like too? This is a Bagley bait. Bagley bait. Mullet. It's a mullet. Um, I think it's a suspending lure. I haven't caught much on these either, but they look great, they work great, and um, they actually move through the water really well, so. Oh, here's my last one in this box. What is the name of this thing? This is just a little- Lunker Hunt Lunker Spud Hunt. Jig. Lunker Hunt Spud Jig. Any sort of little pink jig like this, guys. Dude, you put this in the water and you'll catch a fish in like two seconds. It might be a four inch mangrove snapper or a little jack, but uh, or bait fish, these catch a lot of fish. I got this size. I got another one I'm gonna show you, which is my all-time favorite. But this, there's any sort of little jig like this, man. This will catch fish. I got these little jigs, these are like goggle-eyed jigs, but these work too. I mean, just for the kids or whatever, all day. Yep. And right. then real, real quick to finish out this box, I'm not going through this, but look at this freaking mess right here. Ah! <laughs> this is real, this ain't fake. Yeah, man. This is my tackle box, okay? I'm, I'm sure you guys look like this too, but that's all right. These are a bunch of different color Azuri crystal minnows right here. I've got all different colors. Um, this is a blue one with silver on it. This one has absolutely been crushed and destroyed by baits. You can just totally see like all the color is off of it. It's just a mess, but it still catches fish. Really good lure, like it a lot. I've also got another one of these Target, live Target mullet poppers here. And then um, one real quick, I also have these in my box here because I'm like kind of a, I really feel like I want to catch 
a saltwater fish on a freshwater frog. It's crazy. And I've seen some other YouTubers do it before. I just thought it was like a totally a cool idea, and I'm sure they'll hit it on top water. So I kept these two frogs in my box just in case to throw for top water. And one of these days I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna now that I got it on my radar, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it for that box. Box number one down. Straighten that box up now. Okay, Plano box number two in the bucket. We're gonna open that up and go through it. And I also have a couple lures I'm gonna show you at the end that don't work. I'm, I, they just don't. And also one of the subscriber sent that I'm gonna tell you about. Uh, so there you go, why don't you uh, dive right in, Darcezzle. Okay. All right, so for starters, I've got some split shots here. You never know when you may need them. I like to use split shots to get my baits down deep. And sometimes you just need a little bit of weight to do that. Um, and then I've also got a pink jig head instead of the white. The pink works just as well. I like to use this when we are catching bait in the morning on tabikis. And instead of putting a weight there, like Brian said, we put these on the end. You usually catch a big blue runner like that. And um, it's just another hook for you to catch more bait. Yeah, usually we'll do one one white on one sabiki and one pink on the other sabiki and see just see which works better. Another little jig head, this is the white one. This one catches snook in the dock lights and things, but this is a really good bait for when there's tiny baits around in the area and um, it catches a lot of fish. Yeah, see how small? Yeah, that's the one we talked about before and this is a, just mimics a, a little uh, shiner. Or uh, yeah, a little minnow. A little minnow, anything. Fry. And that's what you see in the dock lights, so you throw this little teeny thing. All right. Yep. Okay, I'm um, done with that section. All right, let me go over some of the ones I see in here that I like. Now she has a ton of Yuzuris. She has them in every color, so I'm not gonna get into every Yuzuri, but um, there's, the, there's two of them right here that we, I know we really like. And if you have them all tangled together, of course. But this one right here, this is a pretty standard color. This is dark, you know, to mimic a mullet. We're gonna match the hatch, remember, in size and, and color. You caught a big tarpon on that two yes. years ago. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. I caught my biggest tarpon at the St. Lucie Inlet. With, was this the same lure? Yeah. This exact lure. Yeah. We're putting the hooks on it. Yeah. With this exact lure, casting from the beach into the St. Lucie uh, Inlet, we caught a monster tarpon. That was in Stewart Inlet. So that's the St. Lucie Inlet, same, same inlet. And uh, you can see, the, maybe you can see the teeth marks on it. You can see where the tarpon destroyed the back side of it. And, and let me tell you, we're at the inlet and the tide's going out real fast. And you know, snook fishing really during the mullet run. I casted it out there. I had a little teeny, a Shimano reel, a good reel, but you know, it's too small for a tarpon. And, and, and a little, and a snook rod, a snook rod, snook, uh, I forget what kind it was, but it was a good rod and a good yeah. Shimano reel. And um, dude, the thing just went out into the current, into the channel, and I had to lock the drag down and just fought this fish for the longest time. Like and, an hour. The, like an hour on his little tackle. And got to the beach with my reel. Blew it up. Blew it up. The handle fell off when Blew. I was reeling and I had to throw the reel out. That was it. Blew it up, but caught the fish. I had to put it all the way down because the thing was going into the ocean and there was nothing I could do. Anyway, that's the lure. This works. All right, so good. Um, and then we have the pink, another pink. These are the same lures we saw before. This is Uri's. Uh, so this up. Yeah, it's just a lot more Yuzuris in this one. Um, I'm just gonna show you really fast. You know, I've got I've got bright colored ones um, for days when it is brighter out, and for days when it's darker out, I like to use darker lures. But you can see this one's like a banana color, banana peel color. This one is like a clown color, orange and yellow. Really good, they work. And then I've also got this particular lure right here. These are more shrimps. We've got a pink shrimp. This one is the 110 millimeter, I believe. And then also I've got this shrimp, and this shrimp I specifically remember because it's got a gold flake inside it, it's very sparkly. And this one I hooked a big old ladyfish on it earlier this year, and the ladyfish was like dangling all over the place, and I went to grab the ladyfish, and when I did that, the ladyfish shook, and when she shook, the, this, this treble hook on the end went right into my finger. Uh, so I actually had to replace the treble hooks on this, and I put pretty, more, pretty red ones on. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then I've also got just more Yuzuris, more, more, more Yuzuris. Got a white one here, 110 millimeter. Got a jointed Missouri right here. This one uh, has its joint in the back. And another colorful Yuzuri right here. And then I also just really quick recently purchased another lure, a live target um, pinfish color. And I just look so, can you tap? It just looks so realistic. Man, it Keep is going to catch some huge fish. I have it. not been able to um, fish it quite yet. I did try it out a little bit, but this thing, I think, is going to catch a ton of fish. And it just, 
whatever. <laughs> the lures attract me, so I'm hopefully think that they're gonna attract the fish too. <laughs> you know how most girls are the shoes and handbags. That's how she is with lures. Yeah. Just telling you. Yeah. Just saying. I right, I picked a couple of uh, important ones out of here, and here's one. This is the what is it called? Just a pink slab. It's a bone. Yeah. It's um. It's from Bonehead Tackle. It's pink slab. This lure, I know it looks like nothing, and literally we, we have a video. We have a video, yes, of this, and on Lucky, uh, Lucky Tackle Box Instruction video. And it looks really cheap, and actually, you put it in your hand, there might be some flex to come off, but if you drop this in the water, you will catch a fish. Yeah, right? guaranteed. <laughs> Die dock. I mean, don't drop it in the middle of the ocean, but if you drop this near a dock or anything, you can't stop the fish. You cannot stop the fish from going on this stupid lure. I don't understand why. All right. Yeah. Another, this, this is a great, just universal. I'll, I'll put this up on, on the screen here. Nice. This is just a universal setup here. We got a, a, a Mustad jig head, you know, we're sponsored by Mustad to give us all our hooks and jig heads and all this kind of great stuff. And it's just a simple jig head, you can use any color, any shape, format, weight, whatever you need. And you just put this little paddle tail on there, you know, a gambler or whatever. Another version of it. Another version, yeah, the same thing, there's one right there. And well, this is a crappy, uh, a crappy I, I didn't put it on there too sweet, but you know, this, change up the colors, this will catch. A ton of fish, man. This is a great thing to just to get started with. It's cheap. These jig heads are just a dollar or something, and these things are a couple cents a piece. And you know, you didn't get the tail bit off all the time like that. Um, but man, I mean, this is just a real simple thing. And, and with the best thing with this is you can vary the, the speed. You know, you can do it slow to get it deep. You can jig it, and you can twitch it. You know, uh, color. twitch, twitch, pause. You know, we have a ton of them. And uh, you know, Captain Pat really turned us on to these. Want to see guide service, and uh, <laughs> easy. I mean, you can catch fish with this thing. It's, it's simple and easy. You don't need to get crazy to catch fish. The basics work. Yeah. Like I mean, bucktails and this thing. Um, you know, you don't need to get crazy. Yeah, and I mean, like you know, when you're fishing those jigs, just really quick. You know, you gotta vary your speeds and retrieval speeds. So you can retrieve it fast, retrieve it slow, retrieve it at a medium speed. Let it drop to the bottom. Give it a couple jerks. Let it sink. Do it again, and bring it back to the boat. And then you kind of just figure out what the fish, what the fish want from you, what they, what they like. So the speed really matters. Um, you know, jig it slow, jig it fast. You know, whatever works. You just gotta keep trying it till you catch a fish, and those things work. They definitely work. Um, yeah, soft plastics are really making making the headline, uh, moving forward in inshore fishing and offshore fishing quite a bit. You know, the gambler, big paddle tails, and the big, big easies and stuff. So uh, don't forget those. They're cheap and they catch fish. Yep. And then pretty much the rest in this thing is just um, more Hazari lures. I've got a few more uh, shrimps in here. I've got a white shrimp. I've got a little, another Hazari. The red seems to work for me. I like the red heads. And this one is a 90 millimeter. This is a 110 millimeter Hazari. Uh, but these things work. That's why I've got a ton of them in my bag. And this is also you see, a tsunami <laughs> popper, top water. So it, it throws a lot of water for that little lure. I actually need to start using it for bass too. So this will be great for bass. It's got a great feather on the end. A lot of action. That will be great for bass. Yep. All right. That's box number two. Box number two. All right. Plano box number three. Final box. Final box. And then I'm going to show you the lures I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to wrap it up. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Sizzle. Okay. Uh, so I've got some... This is some Miro Lure baits I have here. Um, I haven't really used them lately, but I have caught fish on them before. And this one is a lip diver right here, just very similar to the Azuris. Very, very similar. Let's get this off. You can see there's a lip on that one. They kind of, they, they work. They're good lures, I'm not, I, but I'm not, I stick to Azuris nowadays. Yeah. We believe that the Azuris troll better at higher speeds than the Miro Lures. Yes. That's why. Yes. Well, actually, that's our experience. So yes. That's not what we believe, but that's our personal knowledge. And let me show knowledge. you two more things, and then Brian's going to show you two things. Um, so this is another... I have an assignment now. This is the Azuri 3DS <laughs> Crystal Minnow. This is the lure that catches a ton of fish. I have the orange color with the orange belly, but this is another version of it. Very colorful. I've caught a ton of snook on this one, too. And then um, another little live target popper. Actually need to throw it away. The popper thing on the front broke. And then uh, this is a Biwa Divinator. I think I'm saying that right. B-I-W-A-A. -A. And um, it's got a big spinning tail right here. I got this from Missouri um, from Lucky Tackle Box. Loot from Lucky Tackle Box. 
and it's made by Baiwa, and I caught a big barracuda on it, and I haven't really trolled it since, but this thing catches fish. My turn, I guess. All right, I was gonna mention that, you know, honestly down here in Florida, we do a lot of live baiting. We do. Okay, so, you know, um, if we're not, you know, so first thing we're doing is trying to get live bait, and we usually do a mullet or pilter or something like that. But uh, for you folks, you know, if you can't get live bait, you know, then, then shrimp. Shrimp always works. So first go with a live shrimp, and then go with a dead shrimp. But then I want to show you this. Uh, this is a voodoo shrimp, right? Yep. This is the voodoo shrimp. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it close up because this works. This actually works. And in our video, we actually caught fish. So this is the voodoo shrimp, and you put the hook on here, and you jerk it, and it really it, it, with a popping cork. Okay, so the pop the cork. Uh, we have a video on this, so check it out. Maybe I'll put it in the description. Uh, but you jerk the the, the uh, popping cork, it makes a popping sound, and this thing has a really good uh, little action. Yeah. It goes like this, and you can even see this in the video. I went underwater swimming, and show, so you can see this. Yeah. And it's got this tail, and this this works. This catches fish. Um, this is probably, in my opinion, the best shrimp lure out there that I've seen. Okay. Yeah. So that's the voodoo shrimp. Yeah, you gotta look it up online. There's a ton of people that swear by this thing. You can see this weight right you here. You probably heard of it. it the weight kind of keeps it like center in the water, so when you jerk it, counterweight. So when you jerk it, it stays like a normal shrimp would. It really does work. But note to caution, just to let you know, if you buy, end up buying some of these, you need to make sure you keep these separate from the less of your soft plastics. This is made of a special plastic, and then when it gets in contact with other plastics in your tackle box, it actually s destroys it over time. Um, it just deforms it, it makes a mess of it, and um, so that's just a heads up. All right. My lure I'm going to go over is this. This is a pencil popper. Gibbs. Now, Gibbs. Yes, I know it's Gibbs. Now, if you guys up north, you got, I'm sure you guys have heard of Gibbs. They're a famous uh, wooden lure maker up there, and we got this from... Uh, as part of the Lucky Taco Box series, but you know, everyone knows Gibbs and they make very qu high quality lures. So this is a pencil popper, the top water lure. You know, up, up north you guys use it for bass and stripers, but you know, you use it like, it goes like this on the water. And uh, you know, and it's white, it's a very popular, because really, uh, these lures are really great. Um, I'll tell you a little story, you know, we used, we used to work with Gibbs a little bit. Yep. And what happened about that? Something about some hat. I bought the, I got a oh, hat. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you bought a hat. It's industry, the industry. <laughs> yeah, I bought a, uh, I, I didn't want to bother the guy. The guy who runs Gibbs, very nice young fella, and uh, and so I, I bought this visor, and I got the visor, it's a nice visor, and but then I, I got I got I sent, they sent me the wrong color for Darcy, and so I want to get a different one. I called them up, and they were like, "Send me back the visor, and we'll send you a different one." I had never heard of such a thing. Like they didn't believe me or something. So I was a grumpy old man, and I got grumpy, and then I don't know. Then I got a little argument with the owner over there or whatever, the kid, and whatever, no big deal. That's a little little side bit for you. But anyway, they make good lures. Everyone knows it for up north, the striper fishing, right? Yes. You guys you guys up north have definitely used no gibbs. Anyway, on the dust sizzle. Okay, and then I've got a bunch of DOA shrimps over here. I believe these are the three inch shrimps. I've got a ton of them. I honestly don't use them too often, but I like to have them just in case because, you know, like I said, you never know. With sh shrimp is a great go-to bait. Every fish in the ocean pretty much eats shrimp. So I've got it in the silver color, and it's got some weights in here, and um, it pulls from the front right here. But everybody swears by them, catch big snook, catch big tarpon on them. I've got the gold ones here too. I also have the shrimp with the yellow tail. So I've got a bunch of them in my bag, just in case you never know when you may need them. And then um, you want to talk about the flares? Flares? Oh, flare hawks. Flare hawks. Flare hawks are everyone's favorite bait that we never catch anything on. By bait, yeah. I mean look. <laughs> We can't catch them with these. We suck. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why Here's we can't. A, we don't even have, they're all rusty, our flare hawks even. Flare hawk, uh, we don't even have any good flare hawks in here. Here's a mini flare hawk. This is a big flare hawk. See, it looks like junk, but it's got this flare, it's got this tail on here, and it goes through the water and it kind of pulses like this. Yep. All right, and with this long tail. And they use them for snook here in the spillway and under bridges and to get down deep. Here's a better example. That's made by Gulfstream Lures. Well, they're a great local shop around here. Uh, so he's, he, here's the flare hawk and whatever. People love them. I've never caught one fish on the damn thing. We don't, we, don't, <laughs> we don't use them a ton. And a lot of guys use them at night. And we don't like to go fish at night because we don't like to fish at night. And it's bugs. And it's hard to film for you I guys. I can't film. can't film. Um, but anyway, so that's the flare hawks. You know, so you definitely want to try some flare hawks. Got to have some in your tackle box. You know, it's just a kind of a little bit different um, bucktail. Up north, this would be a bucktail, right? Yep. All right. 
Well, actually, those pink ones that we throw, we've been calling jigs, are actually bucktails. Yeah, you know, a lot of terms are the same. These yeah. little jig or bucktail. That's bucktail. Whatever. Yeah. All right, anything else in here, Sizzle, you want to talk about? Um, I'll talk about that. Oh, yeah, talk about that. You want to talk about it? I don't... Everyone loves these kind of swim baits. I don't know. We don't catch. We don't really use them a ton, but they're great. People throw these in the spillway, the Lake Worth spillway, a lot, and uh, we never catch any. We don't really use them. I'm not gonna. They're good because you know they go on the bottom, and it doesn't get caught on things, and they swim pretty good. And they work, but we we don't really use them a lot. We use those Uzuris mostly. And I've got also just like these long shank hooks right here. Can you top the screen? Yeah, I've got these long shank hooks right here and I keep these in my tackle bag just in case because sometimes when we're catching bait or we got chum out and we're trying to get bait by the boat, I end up seeing ballyhoo. And this is a great hook to catch ballyhoo on and I'll use a little tiny piece of shrimp, like rub it up in my fingers and make it into a little ball and stick it on the end of this and then I'll try to catch a single ballyhoo on it because if you try to catch a ballyhoo on your sabiki rigs, then two seconds they just made a total mess of your rig. Um, so this is a little great bait, little great hook to have. I got a couple things I want to talk about. Okay. <laughs> Why are you telling me? Tell them. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm getting permission and I'm going to tell you. First thing is leader material. Now we, this is just pink Andy 20 pound leader material and Eric E. Money Rightwick uh, told us about this. This is what he uses for bottom fishing. Instead of using fluorocarbon, he just uses pink Andy. And it sounds a little wacky, but we honestly never noticed any difference. Um, so this is a, a big spool of pink andy. It's cheap as heck. Keep it right in the tackle box, and you know you can make your long mutton leaders and, and all that stuff. Uh, you know you can. Use, yeah, we also have another thing of 50 of it. You yep. know, and, and 40, and uh, probably some more. We also have all this fluorocarbon. We've got all different sizes in here, ranging from 10 pounds, from 12 to 20, all the way up sure. to 100 pound fluorocarbon, I believe. Yeah, I'll, I'll go over that real. Quick. I'm, I'm going to touch on that in a second. But anyway, so we got so we've been using this a lot. It doesn't have the abrasion resistance, but um, you know, I haven't noticed any difference. I gotta tell you, between the 20 pound Andy that Eric E Money right what told us to use, yeah. he, and he, now he's a great fisherman down here in Southeast Florida. I want to give him e a shout. E Money. E Money in the house. Shout out. Um, if you guys need a charter, like out of the Jupiter area, you want to go Wahoo trolling, you need someone to go to the Bahamas with you on on, on your boat, um, or you need a lesson, a fishing lesson, he's really he's a really a good fella and, and a good friend of the Sizzles and, and mine. He taught us how to fish. We used to, we, I hired him to teach me how to fish years ago. All right, so uh, he's real good. Uh, so that's that story. More bad dogs. These guys Jeez. are the dogs. Hook removers. All right, you got you know you got to take care of these fish out here, guys, especially snook and anything you're gonna release, so you know you're gonna release. Um, so this is hooker mover. It's a nice kind of this one doesn't break off and uh, we got that. Gambler, of course one of our sponsors and I mentioned before people are using a lot more soft plastics. This is your standard paddle tail with this, the shad color that we like, right? Yep. No, this is the alewife. Alewife. Yeah, this is the alewife color. But anyway, you have a whole box of these. We went over these the other day. And these are great. Um, you can put those on those little jig heads. These are for those little jig heads I talked about before, right? And all right, let me go over this, some of this uh, Fluorocarbon. This doggy wants to hang out. She's gonna get hooked. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to mention a couple of these, um, just quickly. Now we're sponsored by Tsunami, so I'm gonna talk about Tsunami fluorocarbon. Here's this. This is what we use mostly. Um, you know, there's a, all the kind of different kinds: Uzuri, Seaguar, Tsunami. I honestly haven't noticed too much of a difference, but so when we use a Tsunami, and it works great. Yep. Um, and we have all the other kinds here, so we tried them all. Tried some really cheap kinds we got on discount. It seemed to work fine. Yeah. But you know, just got, if it says 100% fluorocarbon on there, I'm not sure there's too many differences. Uh, we've tried the bullbuster stuff. Some people say it's a little, a little um, stiff. It's too hard, like tie knots. That's with. what some people say. I don't know. I didn't notice it, but whatever. Uh, anyway, so it's good to have you know fluorocarbon. If you guys don't know about fluorocarbon, I'm not sure how much up north you guys use it because the water is so dirty or unclear. Anyway, you know it, it doesn't stretch. And it gives you more abrasion resistance, oh, yeah. and uh, it's supposed to like you know disappear underwater. So that's really the benefits of it. I think really most of the abrasion resistance, but, uh, supposed to mono. And uh, that's all I had to say about that. Yeah. Now a couple things that I have, I I've never really seen them before, but they don't really work. This is the Napog. What is this thing? I have no idea. It's like from Europe somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some crazy lure we have never seen before and when we got it we're like what the heck is that? Yeah, I don't it know. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Napag, this thing. 
Let's get this little spinner right here and this big head. It has like just no action. All right, don't use that, in my opinion. Don't and, ever get that. And the jig wobbler. This is a big old lure jig wobbler. Um, you know, they have a smaller one too. I think works a little bit better, but this big one is just really hard to get in a sweet spot where the, where the motion goes. And then I want to give another shout out to Skate, Skate Rat. I got those Blue Fox lures I mentioned before. Yeah, they yes. are. I think it's mainly a trap lure. But we're gonna, I got blue, I got blue, silver, and gold. And so we're gonna be trying these out. And I think we're gonna do like a subscriber lure challenge. So this is why I'm bringing this up. Um, you know, Darcy has a PO box in the description below. And so if you send us lure, we're gonna, we're gonna use it and see if we catch fish. Yeah. All right. Um, and actually, yeah, whatever you guys wanna send us, we'll, we'll do if we do that. I'm not trying to get lures out of you, but if you want us to use your stuff and mention you online, then feel free. Yes. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to go to a, a bass fishing seminar with Captain Bill Lepre right now at a, uh, a homeowners association fishing club where Darcy's going to be speaking in December. So we love Bill Lepre, so we're going to support him, and we're probably going to learn something about bass. And uh, that's it. We're wrapping up this vlog. And, uh, yep. Darcy, what we're going to do? So that's, up. that's it for Inshore Saltwater Tackle Box. I hope you like my bucket, uh, but if you want to give me a suggestion for something new and better, let me know in the comments below. And uh, stay tuned because we are going to do a bass, a freshwater slash bass tackle box. I'm going to show you inside of that. And then we're going to show you inside of our offshore fishing tackle box. So hopefully you guys have some of my go-to lures in your tackle box to help you catch more fish. Because um, that's what I want to hear. And actually somebody on Instagram today told me that he went out and bought a Uzuri 3DS crystal minnow. The same color with the orange belly that I use. He said he used it inshore saltwater fishing. And he had the best day of inshore saltwater fishing he ever had and caught a ton of fish. I was like, that's awesome. That's great to hear Did that. Did you hear that, Yazari? Exactly. Did you hear that? Yeah, right? <laughs> that's exactly what I want from the subscribers. He's like, you're awesome. I can't. I watch your videos all the time, and you really help me catch more fish, and now it's my favorite lure. So it was awesome to hear that. Thank you so much for watching my videos, and I'm glad they're helping you catch more fish. Uh, so we'll be back again tomorrow with another episode. We're going to be doing some fishing tomorrow. Um, I guess we're going to be doing some bass or I think we're going to be... Well, I don't, I don't want to... I don't know if we're going to change our mind, but I think we're going to go pond, maybe some pond fishing, because Darcy has to do a lot of studying, yeah. put some ponds around here, and then the next day, we're going to get in the boat, get in, get in some boat, yes. one of our boats, and get fishing. Yes. <laughs> this, this homework stuff is really driving me crazy right now. I am slammed with homework. I have a big test on Wednesday, so even though as much as I want to fish, I have to sit in front of my computer and do a bunch of work that you guys don't want to see. Um, so we'll be back tomorrow. Like this video for us. Give it a big thumbs up if you learned something new. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. New videos every single day. And until our next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching.